ओके सो गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीबडी स्पेशली माई सिंसियर थैंक्स टू वी आई टी वेलोर स्पेशली टू डॉक्टर सत्याश्री टू गिविंग मी द ऑपरचुनिटी टू शेयर माई नॉलेज एमंग यू ऑल सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द सेशन आई शुड थैंक्स फ्यू पीपल द फोरमोस्ट आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक्स आई यूज टू टेल माई गुरु डॉक्टर पेरुमल छेलापांडी फ्रांकली स्पीकिंग द इंटरक्शन एंड द रिलेशन विथ वी आई टी वॉज स्टार्टेड थ्रू हिम ओनली फ्यू मोर पीपल डॉक्टर प्रभात कुमार वी एस सुब्रमणी डॉक्टर बलदेव राज टिल हिज लास्ट डे ऑल्सो आई वॉज अटैच टू विथ हिम फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अ फ्यू इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉम्पोनेंट विथ पी एच जी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग सो दे गेव मी द स्कोप टू लर्न एंड टू एक्सप्लोर माई नॉलेज सो आई ऑलवेज शुड थैंक दे रिसेंटली आई वॉज डिस्कसिंग विथ फ्यू ऑफ द वेरी सीनियर पीपल ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एटोमिक एनर्जी एंड they were discussing they were insisting that for every level we should promote the we should uh, make the awareness to the people for about the nuclear power why why it is required what's its necessity so that's why before going to the subject even though it's uh, relevant to my uh, today's discussion so i want to tell you whenever we are learning something we should know why it is why so why nuclear power is needed for the country we should know that so few slides i will discuss about that then i will go to the subject even though my specialization is different but still what i learned from my 15 16 years of industrial experience in nuclear sector i will try to share among you all and you should also share to the people mainly to the students because they will be the uh, future building blocks for the nation <coughs> today you see we are talking about so many modernization and everything is in our hand just waiting for a single click we are moving with computer android device but still 200 millions of indians are not connected to the grid they are in dark they are dependent their light is only enlightened by sunlight when sun goes off their life is in dark it's obviously it is obvious that we can't provide quality human life without electricity we need abundant power the power is must we should do something when we are capable when there is a natural resources we should we should modulate it for the cause common cause of the people for the benefit of the society in my opinion nuclear power having that capability we need energy security we need energy as well as we need energy security we need green power we should not do something which is in turn creating some hazard for the environment we need green power we need energy without greenhouse gases nuclear energy can provide all how just i will give you a very brief about the nuclear fission where the subdivision of heavy atomic nucleus such as uranium or plutonium they are fragmented roughly to two equal masses two or more equal masses this called this this process is called nuclear fission when a thermal neutron 
that means a neutron of high kinetic energy is bombarded with a heavy nucleus like uranium-235 which can go for natural spontaneous fission. See here what is happening. This is the thermal neutron of high kinetic energy. It is collided and bombarded with the natural uranium of 235 and it is that neutron get absorbed and you see the ma mass number is increased. It is become 236 which is which is which is an unstable nucleus okay immediately it is it goes for subdivision which is called nuclear fission and in turn it will produce three more neutron this process is called fission and this process exhibits enormous amount of energy let us see it numerically okay what is mass defect so you see this is the chemical equation involved in spontaneous fission of uranium 235 so once the fission is completed two daughter particle barium and krypton is generated you see the mass number and the atomic number are chemically balanced. Now if you take the actual mass of the atom in atomism, atomic mass unit. So this is the mass of a neutron, this is that uranium and these are the other particle. If you add this and if you add this and you subtract the total mass of daughter particle minus the parent particles. So the difference of mass is this much 0.176064 atomic mass unit. This mass directly converted to energy following this theory of relativity of Einstein. Now let us numerically calculate how much it will be. So this is the AMU atomic, atomic mass unit. So if you convert into gram. So this is the factor to multiply. Now I need to convert the gram to kg. So that's why I am divided by 10 to the power 3. And the speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. So c square is 9 into 10 to the power 16. So this means this much joules. Okay. So if a single atom of uranium 235 goes for spontaneous fission it will produce 2.63 into 10 to the power minus 11 joules of energy now let us calculate how how it how much it will be for one gram of uranium okay <clears throat> so number of atom in 235 gram of uranium is the Avogadro number n. So in one gram this much of uranium atom will be there. So already we established for a single atom this will be this much joules then you multiply by this which is 6.74 into 10 to the power 10 joules. Can you imagine for one gram we are getting the energy in terms of 10 to the power 10. So one board of trade unit means 3600,000 joules like our unit. Board of trade unit means one single unit of electricity. So if you divide this quantity by this we will get 2 into 10 to the power 4 BOT. That means 20 kilo unit. You are getting 20 kilo unit of electricity. Okay. Now let us come. Let us compare with the combustion of coal. 
ओके कन्वेंशनल थर्मल पावर वेर यू आर बर्निंग द कोल द हिट इज कन्वर्टिंग द स्टीम इन टू सॉरी वाटर इन टू स्टीम द स्टीम रैंक इन साइकिल एंड वी आर रिलीजिंग वी आर एक्सट्रैक्टिंग द एनर्जी थ्रू एक्सपांडर लाइक टर्बाइन एंड ऑल एंड वी आर गेटिंग द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सो इन कम्बर्शन ऑफ कोल वी आर गेटिंग दिस इज द केमिकल इक्वेशन ओके सो वन कार्बन एटम इफ इट इज इफ इट गोज फॉर simple combustion so it will generate 6.4 into 10 to the power 19 joule so similarly 1 gram of carbon having this much of atom avogadro number by by its atomic number okay means molar mass so the 1 gram of carbon similar way can only produce 8 into 10 to the power minus 3 unit there 20 kilo unit for 1 gram of uranium here only 8 into 10 to the power minus 3 unit now if you go for a comparison 1 gram of uranium it's giving 20 kilo unit of electricity whereas 1 gram of coal is giving 8 into 10 to the power minus 3 unit you can see the comparison now if we find the weight equivalent required to produce the same power which is generated from the spontaneous fission of 1 gram of neutron 1 uh, gram of uranium <coughs> that amount will be see this was for 1 gram uranium and this amount was for 1 gram of carbon coal if you divide by this two you need 2500 kg of coal around 3 tons 3 tons of coal is to be burned to get the energy equivalent to the energy which is produced from 1 gram of uranium fission <clears throat> now from this equation you see 12 if you burn 12 gram of coal it will give 44 gram of it will release 44 gram of carbon dioxide to the environment so for for the combustion of in the combustion during the combustion of 2500 kg of coal it will release around 10000 kg of carbon dioxide in the environment how much it it's creating the pollution from this <coughs> you can draw a comparison that how efficient is the nuclear power and how clean power it is so to generate that if you see the area if you see the uh, 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 hazardous aspects and the pollution aspect compared to all other thing all other method of power generation nuclear power is much more superior okay it's a concentrated power source very small area in very small volume you can produce more power and it's a clean power so definitely it is must for the nation okay so now i am slowly entering inside the subject 
anyway this nuclear physics it's a very big and vast subject i will not go in so much details but i will try to give some overall picture without going to deep mathematics and for an engineer the tool the main tool is mathematics without mathematics the concept will not clear will not be cleared but still i will try without going into deep mathematics so that i can give you a overall idea about this nuclear reactor so this graph shows the mass distribution of fission fragments okay so the x axis is the mass number and the y axis is the yield that is percentage per fission what is that so you know in nuclear fission it split, splits a heavy nucleus into two lighter uh, particles which are called the fission products the yield ref the refer the yield refers to the fraction of a fission product produced per fission so you see all the particle which is produced the 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 mass is not uniform so around there are two peaks two peaks so around 90 and around 140 the mass there is a there is a peak why i am showing all these things at the end of the discussion you will be able to understand how to make the reactor if you have fuel how to make the reactor or bomb that time this i am not going to that uh, design details but these are the things required so that's why i am telling you all you see again if the mass are different then the energy released also will be different naturally this will also have the have two peaks okay so here the x axis is number of fragments or number of particles number of counts sorry in y axis is number of counts how many fission product we are getting and the x axis is the energy released by them that energy is same that is mass defect into square of the velocity of light light so here also when the number of products are 200 and 300 that time only we are getting the peak which is in the order of 67 and 100 mega electron volt okay so this is required to design the power of the reactor this graphs are required <coughs> now i am coming to one statistical model let us take one example say there is a water drop there is a tiny water drop in a very say wax coated one plate is there on that uh there is a water drop suppose another water drop is coming with a velocity and collide with that bigger water drop so what will happen first when it will hit if you capture this phenomena in a camera and slow down its speed and if if you see that phenomena if you observe slowly that phenomena what will happen once the bigger drop of the water is collide with the small water drop which having some kinetic energy but the bigger drop was in was in rest which don't have any kinetic energy first the round shape of the water drop it will it will get expanded okay 
and if the energy of the small water drop which was colliding if it is not sufficient enough that means if the kinetic energy is lesser than the uh, surface tension of the water drop then what will happen it will change the circular spherical shape to elliptical shape and it will absorb the water drop and again it will become circular okay it will go it will go its own shape uh, initial shape it will regain its initial shape okay but if the kinetic energy of the water drop which was coming if it is higher than the surface tension of the bigger water drop which is in rest then what will you can see it will it will based on the position of collision this big water drop will convert into a dumbbell shape then slowly slowly it will split it up and we will get two particle okay if we are colliding in the middle exactly symmetrical to the uh, uh, towards the center of gravity it will split into two if it is somewhere else asymmetric then it will become two different particle with different uh, uh, two different water drop with different mass so this from this phenomena bohr and wheelers they developed the fission model so when the heavy nuclear nucleus is getting collided with a neutron of high kinetic energy then the spherical shape of the nucleus will convert into elliptical and if the kinetic energy of that neutron is higher than the activation energy then slowly it will start to deform and if it is less than the activation energy then for a moment it will change its original shape and after some time elapsed it will regain its shape regain its original shape and if it is kinetic energy is higher then it will be splitted up or it will absorb that neutron and it will be excited enough to go for the fission and the fission will take place and the fission fragments will be generated during this process enormous amount of energy also will be released so this is the one statistical model for the nuclear fission so same thing here if you if you see the potential energy dis distribution so you see this is this is the nucleus which was at ground state and once it is collided once it is bombarded with thermal neutron so it's start to gain the energy okay it is you see it start to gain the energy so this is the actually potential barrier definitely it should be higher than that otherwise other phenomena scattering or capturing this phenomena will take place definitely the energy should be more than the potential barrier and once the kinetic energy of the neutron is higher than the activation energy then it will get splitted and after that slowly that will come down once it is going away from the center of the source so this is the 
potential energy distribution curve. Now I am coming to one important phenomena or important term which is called micro microscopic cross section which is a very important term to understand the nuclear fission or the reactor the nuclear reactor say an uniform beam of neutron with intensity i it strikes a thin film which having any number of atoms per centimeter square then the number of interaction which is denoted by c will be proportional to the i and the number of atoms okay so if i write it mathematically so c is proportional to na and c is proportional to i by combining these two c is proportional to na into i so to remove this proportionality i have to bring one constant okay so that is sigma this proportionality factor is called microscopic cross section okay which is conventionally we the nuclear engineer will call it at, at it as burn which is equal to one burn is equal to 10 to the power minus 28 meter square okay <clears throat> so with this theory we can very well understand the neutron and the fissile atom interaction. Now what are the phenomena can happen based on the kinetic energy of the neutron? Okay. So this is the total we understood what is the microscopic cross section. We understood what is sigma. So this is the total sigma. Based on the kinetic energy of the neutron it may scatter or it may absorb in scattering there may be elastic scattering or there may be in is inelastic scattering similarly for absorption it may happen capturing its n gamma capturing or np capturing n alpha can capturing whatever may be or it may go for the fission so these are the phenomena when the neutron is interacted i will not go in details uh, in the mechanical side because this will be much more uh, uh, familiar with the mechanical engineers i don't know how many mechanical engineers are uh, attending this so with this this is the overall picture through which we can understand what kind of event may occur during the neutron atom interaction if you go slightly don't be afraid here i have not going for any uh, uh, math big mathematical derivation it's very simple derivation but it is needed to understand after end of this hope if anyone you are following this you will be having the knowledge to how to conceptualize the uh, activity of a reactor or a bomb so this is the initial intensity of the neutron beam which is incidenting in 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 a thin film and one more thing i am telling i am a north indian so i am not good enough uh, in english so please bear with that uh, but i will try my level best to make you understand so <clears throat> when this neutron beam it is getting incident in a thin film with a tiny 
distance dx and after that when it is coming out from that say the intensity is i plus di so here minus di is loss minus di that is lost so initial was i and minus minus di okay so that's why i plus di so here this minus di already we know what is ni sigma okay this is the number of interaction if you multiply with that section so you will get the intensity so same thing i wrote and if you bring that i down so it will be like this now if you integrate both sides this n and sigma is constant n is the number of fissile atom in that thin film so if i integrate it so i'll get this this is the integration constant now if i apply the boundary condition as i told when the at x is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 my intensity is the initial intensity so if i put here x is equal to 0 and i at that time i is equal to i0 you will get the value of c like this and now c is replaced with that and you will get this and finally so here you will get basically log here you will get log i by i0 okay which is minus n sigma x so that it will go to e to the power and this i0 is multiplied so this is the final equation this is the final equation of the in, with the incident intensity and how instantaneously the intensity of the neutron beam is uh, decayed with respect to distance now in place of this n sigma i am using capital sigma so normally because normally if this is the macroscopic cross section microscopic cross section so i can tell this is the total slight bigger macroscopic cross section okay so with this two three slides hope we understood the neutron and the fission atom interaction now let us have some very uh, uh, preliminary idea about collision kinematics so this this is the my uranium 235 okay <clears throat> this is my neutron which is coming with a very high kinetic energy it's colliding and after collision this is this particle is achieving the velocity capital V and this is also uh, this definitely this due, due to the energy transfer this V small v is lesser than the V0 so the two two particle getting this kind of recoiling parameter now from the law of conser conservation of momentum this initial velocity initial uh, uh, momentum was mv naught and after that mv plus capital mv so if you take this other side so it is like this okay now kinetic energy we are we are uh, considering there is no loss during this collision so the kinetic energies are also equal kinetic energy is half mv square so it is like this so now if you take the term one side so v0 minus v square is equal to this so this is a square minus b square a plus b into a minus b so v0 plus v into v0 minus v so this term if you divide it by this so this m by m 
it will be cancelled and one v will go so v0 plus v will be like this so take this is equation 1 and take this is equation 2 now if you add 1 and 2 you will get v0 is equal to v by 2 into 1 plus capital m by small m and small v is this one simple very simple plus 2 concept therefore the amount of energy transferred to the nucleus initial was e0 now it is say e so it is e0 minus e okay so now see that we 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 uh, established what is we we found v and v naught in the previous slide slide this one so this is capital m plus small m by m capital m minus small m by m if you divide it by 2 this will be like this so the e naught is equal to half m v square sorry e is equal to half m v square and e naught, e naught is equal to half m v naught square so m m cancel so if you put this value it will be like this so e is equal to e naught into this term so that only i wrote here now if you minus it so what will happen capital m plus small m square minus capital m minus small m whole square which is 4 ab so this is the this amount of energy is gained by the recoiled nucleus this is very simple derivation and this is referred as collision kinematics in nuclear physics I will not, here it is a very uh, conceptual thing, but I am not going in details because it is needed. So, this is called fixed law through which we can predict the number of neutron flowing in unit time through a unit area to the direction of flow. So, we will understand the uh, uh, diffusion, the diff we will understand the diffusion equation later in later slide. So, this d is the diffusion coefficient and this is the gradient, grad, grad means not gradient, it is a Lapl Laplace operator, divergent. So, j is equal to the diffusion coefficient into divergent of the neutron flux the neutron flux is in turn given by number of neutron into the velocity it's very simple okay velocity means ds by dt ds by dt so in distance in in, in unit distance that means the number of neutron passing through a particular aperture in unit time that is the neutron flux so the fixed law state that states that the number of neutrons flowing in unit time through unit area normal to the direction of flow which is nothing but diffusion coefficient into divergent of the nu uh, neutron flux so from this discussion to generate the nuclear power thermal energy we need the foremost we need the fissile or fertile fuel fissile is the fuel means which can go for uh, uh, instantaneous fission fertile means which having the capability to do the fission if it is breeded breeding breeding this this all all terms come from uh, human life like our during human breeding the haploid haploid cell is going to deploy deploy deployed cell then only that uh, um, reproduction means the 
uh, phenomena of embryology started. So similarly, that fertile material means it, it having the hidden capability to do the fission if it is breeded. So this is called the breeder reactor or fast reactor and the fissile material directly used in heavy water reactor. You need the neutron source. We are talking about bombarding with fast neutron, fast neutron. Where I will get the neutron? You need the neutron source to initiate the uh, uh, reaction. We need the geometry. We need the geometry of the reactor. Means, if my fissile materials are scattered and I am generating the neutron, it is not getting collided. It is going somewhere else. The reaction will not happen or it will not sustain. It will initiate, but after some time it will stop, die down. So you need the specific geometry. You need a sustainable chain reaction. You need critical size. Critical size means, critical term means it is sustainable. We will understand it in details. We need the critical volume. So these are the things are required to proceed for nuclear fission. Just one minute. Ravi, now uh, for uh, class light, one hour up from Kalpana. Okay. So, so this is the these are the things required. So now coming to the neutron source. Okay. So for neutron source, two materials, beryllium and the polonium, they are aparted. They are separated by a foil. Okay. And one it is once it is crashed. Okay, if you apply the force, that means once it is mixed, once the beryllium and the polonium is mixed, this allows the alpha particle from the polonium to impinge on the beryllium atom. Okay, and it is releasing a burst of neutrons with very very high speed okay the rate is around one neutron in every 5 to 10 nanoseconds you, you imagine that much of neutron if this neutron if I am I am taking one this uh, beryllium and polonium separated by a foil and putting inside the uh, reactor core and breaking the foil immediately it will generate um, uh, uh, the uh, fast neutron or neutron with kinetic energy which will trigger the chain reaction in bomb basically this is, this is uh, extensively used in bomb okay so when that shock wave in implosion type bomb when the shock wave is generated it, it breaks the uh, foil and immediately the chain action chain reaction started okay so we should know so now we should get a, a, a very brief concept of oh i'll go first now uh, um, the, the uh, we'll understand the diffusion equation so this is the rate of change of neutron generation with respect to time so which is nothing but production minus something will be leakage which is not at all coming to uh, 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 the fissile atom and something which is getting absorbed production minus leakage minus absorption under steady state there is say there is a neutron generator is constant there is no change so dn by dt uh, del n by del t is 0 
in that case my production is equal to leakage plus absorptions so from the fick's law we understand the leakage term is diffusion co coefficient into divergent of the neutron flux okay and the absorption term we we already understand what is sigma macroscopic cross, cross section if you see the uh, if you remember the previous slide so the macroscopic cross section into neutron neutron flux the macroscopic cross section for the absorption into neutron flux it will give the absorption now if you rewrite this it will be like this so you remember this is the diffusion equation now coming to the four factor for formula it's very important whether it will be bomb or it will be reactor okay so here the multiplication factor k normally we used to call k which is capital n by small m n so that means capital in the neutrons are available for available for production for fission in the next generation and n small n is the number of neutrons are absorbed in the nuclei of the fuel okay so this is the multiplication factor now what are the possible value of k either the k is 1 k is 1 means how many is coming absorbing that many only producing so it is a sustained chain reaction will happen it will not die down it will maintain the power which is used in the reactor so there will be fission rate, uninterrupted fission rate we will obtain but if the k is 1 k is greater than 1 then every time every successive fission it will the rate will increase which is used in bomb if k is less than 1 then if i want to shut down then i have to absorb the neutron more using my uh, uh, absorption rod then my reactor will shut down okay so these are the three possible value of k now let us understand the chain reaction one small animation for example if a neutron hits a fissionable nucleus it will break up release energy and probably more neutrons you see the top one these neutrons can then repeat keep on going when they hit more but here you see the kinetic energy at the bottom reaction. kinetic energy was not, not sufficient reaction. enough well, okay so it is absorbed it is not going further okay now you see in case of bomb to be so sedate k is greater than 1 causes another uranium and another one it can go 1 to 3 to 9 to 27 and don't forget each of these fissions releases a lot of energy so that's the principle it is keep on going suddenly this action this explosion is it uh, it will happen within few millisecond 10 millisecond within 10 to 8 millisecond it will happen blast so as time is where time is less so i am not detailing i am not going in details because few more things i need to tell so this this formula is called the four factor formula so the multiplication factor depend on this eta epsilon p and f okay so these are the things so this eta is basically uh new into g okay this i am not anyway i will i will detail it 2 minutes only so this is n is the n is the number of thermal neutron which is absorbed okay and new is the 
number of fast neutron emitted per fission and which is basically slightly higher than 1 in practical case. So that is why the total number of fast neutron produced is n nu epsilon. Now here I am using few more factors. So the f is the fraction of thermal neutron which is absorbed by the fuel which is called basically the thermal utilization factor. Okay. And what is G? G is the fraction of thermal neutron absorbed in the fuel during the fission. So from there we are finding the infinite multiplication factor. And finally this is the product of these four terms that is why it is called four factor formula. So when you are predicting or you are designing the reactor your four factor formula will be uh, calculated based on those parameters. Now, if you rewrite for a sustainable, as I told, for criticality, my K should be 1. That means, K1 means the neutron generated in the successive uh, fission is always constant. That means, N3 minus N2 also same. K1 means that one only. If K is 1, then my dn by dt constant differentiate, if you differentiate a constant quantity, it is 0. So, if you remember the diffusion equation, so it is like this. Okay. Now, we understand the, we understand the multiplication factor. We know the micro, uh, uh, macroscopic cross section and the neutron flux is calculated. Now we can find out the production term, how much in every fission, how much new uh, neutron is getting produced. So this production term, this S term, this S term is rewritten as this. Now if you simplify, if I, if I take these things together and divide it by the diffusion coefficient, then I will get a factor like this and my differential equation is converted to like this where I, where I have assumed this k minus 1 by d into sigma a is equal to b square. This b square is called the geometric buckling. You know, who are mechanical engineer, they know the buckling, it is a structural phenomena when the uh, compression in a structure is happening, there is a deformation in the structure which is called buckling. So this, this geometrical buckling parameter basically will determine the critical size, critical volume and everything. Sorry, sorry for interruption. Uh, Mr. Karnan, please mute yourself. Sir, uh, somebody's uh, mic is uh, on. Can you mute? So, this is the this is the second order equation, but it is in spherical polar, polar coordinate. So, for solving purpose, it is, if it is, uh, you can take it to Cartesian coordinate also, but I am not going to the general solution of that. Uh, you know everybody, first you have to uh, find out the auxiliary equation. So, here it is very simple because the excitation part is 0. So, there is no particular integral, only complementary function will be there. So, if you solve that, there is a constant, arbitrary constant C is coming. Now, I am to, to, to vanish or to um, uh, estimate or to uh, calculate that C, I am replacing, I am, I am giving one boundary condition that at radius R0, the neutron flux is vanish out. That means, at R is equal to R0, my phi R is 0. 
So if you put in this equation, so C by R0 into in place of R, I am putting R0. B R0 is equal to 0. So sin, sin x is equal to 0. The general, general solution of this is equal to x is equal to n pi. Correct? So now this term because c and r not equal to 0. So now my br is equal to br0 is equal to n pi. So my r0 is equal to n pi by r0. Now my volume my critical volume will be because I consider it is a spherical coordinate. So that volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So that here it is r0. So if you replace this r0, r0 means pi by b. If you calculate it, it will be the critical volume of the reactor. It will be 130 by b cube. It's a thumb rule for a spherical reactor. So you can calculate these things for any kind of geometry. And this is the procedure we call always critical size, critical mass, all these things, critical volume. So using this, we can calculate the critical volume. So if the volume is scattered, you bring, you calculate the critical mass using this diffusion formula, find the critical volume, that critical mass, say it is scattered, say some rice. It is, uh, it is uh, spreaded in a table that I calculated the critical mass is say 1 kg. 1 kg rice in my floor I spreaded out. Then slowly if I able to bring that spreaded volume to the critical volume and if I initiate a neutron source, my fission will start. And if I uh, uh, calculated already my uh, multiplication factor if it is 1 a sustainable chain reaction will happen if it is less than 1 some fission will take place and then it will die down and if it is k greater than 1 then it will become bomb over you can design your reactor now what is breeder reactor because I am in breeder reactor so what is breeder reactor this breeder reactor so normally the natural uranium is 238, which don't have, which cannot take place directly in spontaneous fission. So one neutron, if it is absorbed, it is converted to, so that's why it is called fertile. It's having the capability to do fission, but spontaneously it can't. Like till uh, uh, till uh, the uh, the two haploid cell from uh, father and mother is not fusing together, the embry embry embryogenesis will not start. Similarly, if this fertile, this, this fertile atom, if it is not absorbing a neutron, it will not go further. So this natural uranium is getting absorbed, uh, uh, one neutron is getting absorbed in natural uranium, this is the 238 isotope and it has become 239 which is unstable it goes to successive beta decay and it is going and it is converting plutonium which is fissile our reactor is that one only okay so from uh, heavy water reactor whatever fuel is coming every day we are getting fuel it is never ending it is it is, it is not getting like a coal you are burning end no every uh, heavy water reactor means fission reactor is producing uh, fertile material you breed it generate again power how much efficient you see now i'll tell slightly this is this is the structure of normal reactor so this uh, there are two loops one is primary loops this is the heat transportation and here uh, this is steam generator the tube side is steam and the shell side will be the secondary coolant and our case it's a, a pool type it's a coolant is sodium it's a sodium pool inside the sodium pool the reactor core will be there it's
uh, uh, so it will like that and these are the control rods by by, by uh, uh, controlling the position of the control rod you can control the absorption hence the you can control the multiplication factor hence you can control the reactor power as well as shutdown so this here this steam ranking cycle again which is coming and getting expanded in the compact expander turbine and this uh, pressure volume product is converting to energy and torque which is rotating an alternator this alternator is giving power to the grid and here when the uh, in the turbine outlet it is get it is need to be get conde condensed so this is the condenser so basically we are generating from inside the reactor we are generating 1260 megawatt of thermal power okay from there this our alternator is 588 mva okay 588 mva we are getting 500 megawatt electricity finally those are the losses so here there is a opportunity we are throwing around 750 megawatt of thermal energy to see but the delta t is very less here delta t is around 7 degree so this project we started with Dr. Chelapandi, but unfortunately it was not materialized that if you can generate some heat exchanger which can extract the heat with a high flow low delta T. If there is a high delta T low flow, you can very easily you can extract the uh, enthalpy. But if your delta T is less but Q is high, we need some special technique. So the, uh, that it is not materialized anyway. Now I will tell slightly two slides about the bomb so there are two type of bombs one is gun type in gun type you see there are two you based on the you define you here take k greater than one you predict how much it will be the power you need so th those if k greater than one the 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 mass required for fission it's called supercritical mass so that you divide into two subcritical mass and keep away okay now if there is a gun so here you see this part is called the detonator like a inside barud is there like some explosive is there once it is like gun if you trigger it it will fire like our lighter our lighter lighter also having a, a detonator it will fire and it will expand the volume then the one one subcritical mass it will be uh, it will be at rest and in some distance away okay which is called target this is called target and due to this explosion when this other part of the subcritical mass is moved and coming closer to the target so this is called projectile part so when the projectile and the target is getting coincided and if there is a neutron source immediately the chain reaction will happen and explosion will take place so basically you see this is a this is a cylinder this is a one part of that subcritical mass and another part of subcritical mass it is in a hollow cylinder so when the deton uh, uh, detonator is triggered due to the explosion this part it will move and this projectile part uh, sit on the that means the target part is inserted inside that projectile part and now your mass is total together it is supercritical mass if there is a uh, neutron initiator is there as I told in my earlier slide it is uh, 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 neutron is generated immediately the chain, chain reaction will take place which is uncontrolled chain reaction k greater than 1 and explosion will happen within 10 millisecond 8 millisecond 8 to 10 millisecond we can calculate it that I am not showing now this is another type bomb which is called implosion so here the, as I told, the, the, here you see in the animation, the, uh, the supercritical mass is kept uh, scattered form and the outer layer, it is outer layer, it is conventional explosive and when that explosion happened that, uh, due, to, due to the triggering, then the shock wave is generated and this shock wave, 
it it's pushing the outer enclosure of the the uh, uh, fuel and it is compressing and this uh, distributed uh, uh, fuel mass is now going to the critical volume and critical mass and neutron initiator also triggered activated and the bomb blasted so this was all about so hope i don't know how much because how much i able to cover but i i tried my level best to i tried my level best to uh, explain